Good morning. It's coming. The IT guy is telling me it's coming. Okay. While we're waiting, a couple of months ago, my mom called me from Spain. She just went to a funeral. And in the funeral, the cousin of the, of the person that died was sharing a testimony. This testimony went something along the lines like this. He saw his cousin two weeks prior his death. He was 53 years old. And this, uh, this person was affected with liver cancer. And he was saying to his cousin, why me? Why me? Why this is happening to me? And uh, my mom called me and uh, asked me the same question. See, we cannot answer that question, can we? But let me, let me tell you one thing. I knew the lifestyle of that person. If you're playing Lotto, and you have the possibility to buy 99% of all the numbers, it will be difficult to say later, when you get the Lotto, why me? I mean, there's, there's always a possibility, right? There's always a possibility, but if you buy the lotto and you buy the 99% or 99% of the numbers, chances are high chances that you'll get the lotto. Before we start, we are going to spell today God's plan for you, for you and for your life, for the life of your loved ones. So bear with me, come with me into a journey to discover God's plan for you, God's plan for me. Before we start, let us open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you because you have a plan for us, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will take possession of our minds, will keep us awake and alert to what is going to be presented, Lord. It is your plan for our health. It is your plan for our life, Lord. Let not this uh, individual in, at the front, Lord, be a stumbling block in any way, Lord. Transform my words into uh, the words of the Holy Spirit that can actually put impressions, heavenly impressions in the hearts and minds of the people. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. All right, so what is sickness? Let me remind you before I go further, today at 3 o'clock, we've got a follow-up program on cancer. I hope you all come. I hope you all come. For the three o'clock meeting, it's a follow-up program. This is just, uh, oh, this is just um, run through God's plan. But more specific will be more specifics will be talked uh, at three o'clock. So you're welcome to come. We want you to come. Okay. So what is disease? What is actually disease? Why are we getting sicker? We raise our hands and say because of sin, right? Which is true which is true. But I'm going to give you a definition of sickness, okay? I want you to pay attention to this definition because if you catch this definition of sickness, you will realize that God's plan is totally different to the devil's plan. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Just want to make sure. All right. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. So what is disease? It's a what? It's an effort of nature. Catch this because this is a key thought. When we are sick, we're not going down. When we are sick, the body wants to fight the good fight. That's why we're getting sicker. The sick is nothing else than an alarm in our bodies that is telling us I'm fighting. I am with you. You cooperate with me. We'll go through it. We, you take the hand of Jesus. You follow the rules. And we'll go through it. The body rises up the temperature in something that we call fever. Just because by fever, the blood runs faster. And by running faster, fits the cells quicker. And can actually heal faster. Did you catch that? 
Okay. This work continues on, and it says, in case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained, and helpful conditions should be changed, wrong habits corrected, then nature is to be assisted in her effort to spell impurities and to reestablish right conditions in the system. Did you get that? First of all, we have to determine why we got sick in the first place. Then we have to change and alter the conditions or the circumstances that make us, made us sick in the first place. And then we have to cooperate with the body, right? Now, the sickness of the body is what? It's an effort to heal. So, okay, body, my body, you are in it. I, I am in it. Getting hold of the hand of Jesus, following his counsels, and we'll take, and Jesus says, I'll take you through it. Okay? Now, this is one of the most beautiful quotes in the Holy Scripture. Some of you here came to the Beyond Imagination seminars, and you discover amazing truths about the character of Jesus. Amazing truths about the character of God. But look at this quote. This verse in uh, the third epistle of John says, Beloved, I pray that you might prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. Okay, all of, them, all of you that came to the Beyond Imagination seminars, have your soul been prospering? Your spirituality growing? Show me your hands. Amen. Oh, now, the Lord wants that as you are growing spiritually, He has a plan for you. It's God's plan. You will grow, how? In health. There's two main, two main areas, or two main portions in the Scriptures that tells us God's plan to our lives. The first one is the creation story, right? The perfect world. That's God's plan for us, to live forever, to live in a perfect place with no sin. That's God's plan. The second one is found in Jesus. We are told about Jesus, that he went through the villages, and when he left the village, how many were sick, or how many were left sick? None. Is that God's plan? That's God's plan. God's plan is to heal us from all our diseases. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, God said, none of their diseases will be affecting you. Is that God's plan? That's God's plan. That is God's plan. And we are going to study today, we are going to go through, we are going to actually spell it out. We are going to spell out God's plan. Okay? So if you have pen and paper, it will be good for you to actually write it down, take it home, and read it every now and then because God has a plan for your life. So you better know which one it is. All right? We are going to go to the creation story. Now, I've got all the scriptures in there, but if I don't carry this in my hand, I'll feel naked up here. So you might actually not see me opening it, op opening the Bible, because I actually have got it in there. So by the time I read it to you, you already read it. Nevertheless, allow me to, to carry this. I'll feel more safe with my sword in my hand. Okay? <laughs> All right. We go to the creation story. So which one is the first word of God's plan? Which one is the first word of God's plan? Okay, children, which one is the first word of God's plan? G. All right? Godly trust. Godly trust. I mean, you can, go to, you can go to any lifestyle centers. You can go to any cancer treatment, natural method clinic, and they can actually do the whole setup to you, and they will get results. But I'll tell you what. If they don't have this one, they're only running at 20% of the speed. Because this is the basis. This is the whole the whole rock, the whole foundation. I'll tell you a story. 
in Genesis 2, 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had, he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Picture this. There is Adam. There is Adam there. And that's Eve, right? And God says to Adam and Eve, you see all this? Say, so, yeah. Is it beautiful? Yeah. Six days. What do you mean? Done it in six days. Now, were they, they, were they in the first day? Was, no, they were not, isn't it? Which, which day they were created? In which day they were created? Day six, right? So they couldn't see anything of the account recorded in chap uh, chapter one of Genesis, or most of it, right? Adam, Eve, can you see all this beautiful? Yeah, six days. I've done it in six days. Now, does that require faith? And then picture this. God looks at Eve and I said, isn't she beautiful? I said, oh, yeah. From your ribs. Ah. <laughs> what do you mean? Ah, I took it from the ribs. That beautiful lady there that I made your wife I took it from your ribs. See? Godly trust is an ingredient that we have to grasp, that we have to hold on to, because it is the basis. It was there right from the beginning. It was even there for Adam and Eve. Why do I believe that was six days? Because Jesus could have said anything else to Adam, isn't it? He could have said anything else. He wasn't there. He could have said one day. He could have said two days. He could have said 50 million years. He said six. He could have said any fat lie that he could, that he could imagine. He said six days. Godly trust. You see, you cannot trust somebody that you don't know. But what was the children's story all about? That God is not a vegetarian crocodile. Why not? Because if you think that God is a crocodile, no matter how much kosher and vegetarian and good counsel it is in here, you won't trust a vegetarian crocodile. God can only be trusted if you know who God is and if you know that God has a plan for you, has a plan for you to be made whole. And whole means spiritually as well as physically as well as mentally. So what we are going to, to look at today is not just a set of rules for my physical being. We'll discover that it's a set of rules for everything that concerns us and everything that concerns us with our relationship towards Him. Godly trust. Trust in the Lord. Listen to this. This is found in Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not in, in, the own, in your own understanding. In all things acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Be not wise in your own understanding. Fear God and resist evil. And then in verse 8, it says something very, very interesting. I believe that this is the greatest medical book written in history. Amen. And I'm going to show you some of those beauties. He says in verse 8, it will be health to your flesh and drink. Other versions call it strength, but actually the literal translation in the Hebrew is drink to your bones. What is running inside of your bones? Okay, on, the, on medical terms. Marrow bone, right? It's the marrow bone. You can go to any studies, scientific studies published today and these studies will tell you that if a cancer patient has depression, pretty much won't make it. That person will make it through. If he has a positive attitude and a trust, the chances improve. And if he's a believer of the Lord our God and Savior, 
the chances are much, much higher. Why? Because you have a trust in the Lord Almighty, and He is going to make Marabon. Isn't that what the, 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 tec the text is saying? He's going to do Marabon for you. Now, what does the marrow do to your body? It generates the blood cells, right, that clean your body. So Marabon generates clean blood, clean blood works against disease. Huh? Look at this scripture. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. See? What is it drying? What, what a broken spirit is drying? The marrow bone. What happened, what happened to your blood? Low quality blood, no healing. Low quality blood, no healing. Low immune system, no healing. Positive attitude, trust in divine power. Your immune system right, goes up and the Lord generates the liquid that you need. I mean, really, we call it marrow bone, but I'm pretty sure it has a bit of living water in it, isn't it? Okay, we go for the O. Oh. There's the open air. So you see, my mom used to close the windows at night when I was little. Used to close all the windows. You know why? Because in my neighborhood, around 2 o'clock in the morning, there was one old man that lived, that lived more than 400 years. And he had a big sack. And in this big sack, he would put all the children. He would walk through your window. Now, do you believe that? I believe that. <laughs> At a time in history. Right? So all my doors were shut. We are told that, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. The Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. That's interesting because this is God's plan, right? This is the, the creation story. This is God's plan. So, there are many cases in the Bible in which you find people fasting, some of them for 40 days. You never find anybody fasting from breathing for 40 days, right? This is vital. The Lord gave us His Spirit of life into our nostrils. How many, how many, how many of you with children have paid attention when the children were little and they were breathing? the movement of the tummy. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen that? Yeah. They go up and down, up and down, up and down, isn't it? And we're looking at it and saying, how can I, how can I, I, I can't do that. Well, two main reasons. I will say the third one also. One of them is because your diaphragm change, all right, as you grow older. But that's not the main reason, though. I believe the two main reasons why we don't breathe properly and we harvest diseases because of a, of a lack of breathing is this. First of all, posture. How you sit. If you sit like this, you can't move your diaphragm. You can actually prove it for yourself. If you sit like this, I can see my brother here, they just put his back nice and straight. But if you sit like this, you cannot move your diaphragm. It is physically impossible. So posture is something that we inherit from the lazy boys watching football. We inherit that, right? When dad comes home, sits down like this. When we grew older, we sit down like this, all right? So we, first of all, it's posture. The second is actually ego. E-G-O, ego. You know why? I'll tell you. I was walking through a university campus the other day, and I saw this, this young man full of muscle, a singlet, nice tang. He was talking with, with a beautiful lady. 
And I knew I was going to do this presentation today, so I checked on the diaphragm movement. <laughs> that guy was not moving the diaphragm. Why not? Because the six pack, some kind, some, some, some kind of a rather, disappears when you start, right? Showing your tummy, right? So we don't show our tummy. We make sure that, like, if our bells are getting wider, we just sort of, like, you know, we take it literally. You know, tie your bells? We take it literally. We don't show, you know, if our wives take us shopping for new pair of pants, you know, and the previous one was a size 34 Levi, and now you realize that size 34 is not going to fit. But you can't show that to you, to your wife, so you just... Right? No diaphragm movement. We have to forget about ego and care more about health. We need to learn to breathe. A friend of my mom, my mom always tells me a lot of stories. Every, every now and then she calls me and um, she says, guess what? What? Guess who died? She lives in Spain and she always keeps me in touch to the ones that are dying. People that have family overseas know this, right? Family overseas always keep you in touch of who is actually dying and, and in which condition. She has a friend. This friend has lung cancer. And this is the first thing that my mom told me. He never smoked, never drank. He has lung cancer. For my mom, disease is lottery. For me as well. He bought all the tickets. He lives in an environment that is full of dust. He, he works in an environment that is full of smoke. And he cannot breathe properly. Now, I'm going to give you an exercise because we're hoping that this will be a practical presentation also. I want you to put your hands here. All right, just put your hands there. And just breathe normally. Now, if your hands are not moving, you're not moving your diaphragm. So a very good exercise that you have to do in order to get well. Now, lung cancer does not only happen because of smoke. When you have a flu that has been cured in a wishy-washy way, and you're not breathing, uh, breathing in oxygen to the most parts of the lungs, you have areas on your lungs that are actually full of poison. You are not releasing that poison out through breathing. It is still here. And one day, all of a sudden, lung cancer. How that came from? It was there all the way. You have to learn to breathe. So an easy exercise for morning, evening, and at noon. So as you pray, morning, evening, and at noon, this is an easy exercise. You put your hands like this. You breathe. Make sure you actually blew up your, um, your stomach like a balloon. All right? And you hold it. And when you release it, when it's fully out, when all the air is fully out, you hold it there for a, for a couple of seconds. So you breathe in, hold it, breathe out, hold it. You put your hands there just to make sure that you're not cheating. Okay? That's a very, very good exercise for breathing. D for daily exercise. Now there is a a part in that formation that is scary. Which one is it? The daily. <laughs> ah. Well, we believe in the daily sacrifice. Don't we? We believe in the daily sacrifice. So this is talking about daily exercise. All right? Look what God said to, or did to Adam. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and keep it. Put him to work. Now, activity is a very, very helpful way of living. 
If you cannot sweat, I'll recommend you to buy one of those jackets, thin jackets that we use for the rain, all right, that makes you sweat. Do you know which ones I'm talking about? The very thin ones, all right, they look like plastic, all right, so you put them on, you do gardening, for half an hour you sweat. Okay, this is the kind of exercising we're talking about. We're not talking about an exercise that says, I did walking. How? I just went walking from my house to the car, from the car to the office, from the office to the car, from the car to the house. That's not the exercise that we're talking about. We're talking about an exercise in which your heart is pumping blood. You need that blood pump. You need that blood in all your parts of your body. You don't want any part in your body that is harvesting disease. You need the cleansing of the blood in every part of your body. And the easiest way to do that is through circulation, through movement, through rushing up, through pumping of your heart. It doesn't need to be long. You can be for half an hour a day. Make, so, make sure you sweat. Okay? S stands for shanla, sunshine. See? Sunlight, su sunlight, sunshine. See, I've got, a, I've got to tell you, I've got a problem with the word sushi. Sushi, you know the Japanese food, the sushi? And I've got another problem with the word sunshine. I've got to, I've got to write it then, right? Sunshine, okay. So bear with me. That's why I, I've got it all written down for you, okay? So there's no excuse to miss it. Then God made two great lights, the, great, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So he made sunshine. He made the sun. Now the sun furnishes vitamin D in the body. You can keep vitamin D for a week. But if you stay in your house for a whole week, at the end of the week you run out of the storage. All right? Cholesterol levels, sunshine lowers cholesterol levels also. Some of you know my testimony in regard to my eyesight. I had 3.5 myopia in my, my eyes and just by using the principles that I'm showing here today directed to my eyesight, my eyesight was corrected. And one of them was sunshine. And what I'm going to tell you also it's a very good exercise that will recommend you every day that is not raining to do. Okay? You go outside in your backyard in the early hours of the morning, let's say, I mean, not so early, you need the sun. So in an hour, early enough that you're not going to be burned or get burned, but so you close your eyes and you stir up the sun, you make sure you, the sun is actually uh, on your face, hands, and so forth. You will be amazed of how much healing properties just the sun has in your body. Those rays of sun can actually get inserted in your frontal lobe, go through, and as the baby inside the mom's bell, uh, tummy can see the brightness of the outside, so your brain can actually be affected by the sunshine. Sunshine of the outside. So if you do it, let's say, 8 o'clock in the morning for about 15 minutes, okay, uh, or if you come in from work, 4.30, 5 in the afternoon, so avoiding the dangerous hours of the sun, you will get a blessing. Headaches will be gone, or at least lessen in number. Listen up. This is God's plan. This is God's plan. P for proper rest. So if there is a proper rest, what is the opposite? Improper. Right? Improper rest. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. The Lord we're just going to talk quickly about the Sabbath. This is, this is not the topic as such, but the fact is that it was part of God's plan. He made the Sabbath for us to relax, for us to rest, 
That doesn't mean you don't do nothing in the Sabbath, but that means that you arrive at the end of the Sabbath and say, thank you, Lord, I feel refreshed today. Thank you, Lord, because you have stopped me by putting it in your law from keep on working, keep on working, keep on working and killing myself. Praise to your name. So, we're talking about rest here, and I want to show you this scripture. Now, it says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. And we've got that taken from Ephesians 4, 26, B. Now, when we have a B at the end of the reference, what does that mean? That we're missing part A. Anybody knows what part A says? It says, sin, oh, so, pardon, oh, sorry, it says, um, you can actually be in wrath, but sin not. In other words, it is all right for you to get upset. You know, you might have your spouse, your children, your college, your, your, your work, your, your college, <laughs> your work, your workmates, whatever. You can actually, you've got authority from the Lord to be upset, not to commit sin, but to get upset. There are certain things that happen in our daily li lives that upset us. That's where we have to take it to Jesus. But in the meantime, in the process, sometimes we get upset. The Lord says, okay, all right, you got upset, sin not. And then he says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Now, what this scripture has to do with proper rest, I'll tell you a secret. I heard one day, and I, when I heard this, I couldn't believe it. Did you know that there are out there married couples that can actually be living in the same house, sleeping in the same bed, and not talk to each other for a whole week? When I heard that, it was unbelievable. You might, you might be as astonished as I am, but out there, there are actually people that actually can let the sand down on their wrath. It's unbelievable. Now, what is that going to do with you, to, to your rest at night? What is that going to do to your rest? Forget about healing. Kiss your wife and say sorry. I can say that because I'm a male. And I learned my lesson. All right? And the lesson was that sometimes we have to be at 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, because we were following the scripture, right? And it was 2 o'clock in the morning, and my pride would, would not allow me to go to, to, to her and say sorry, and her pride would not allow allowed her to come to me. But we couldn't sleep because of that verse. So it was 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And we said, well, we're not sleeping. <laughs> we're not going to sleep. We want our proper rest. Right? Now, let me tell you something. If you work in the Internet, and you think you are going to have a proper night to sleep if you do this. You've been working in the internet for an hour. You just clock, uh, uh, log off, turn off your computer, brush your teeth, go to bed. It's not going to happen. Your eyesight is straining of all the movement, all the movement, uh, all the images, and so forth. And it's not going to happen. If you just watch the TV for an hour and then just turn it and in, in within five minutes you are down in your bed trying to sleep, it's not going to happen. I mean, you, you might fall asleep. But we're talking about here what? Proper or improper? We're talking about proper rest. It's not going to happen. You'll be dreaming about Rambo or whatever you saw, <laughs> you saw on TV, right? I mean, and if you're dreaming about a guy that is climbing up mountains and going down, I mean, in the morning, you, you're going to be so exhausted, you know, you've been climbing up and going down and running around, and, right? Do you want proper rest? Make sure. I don't want to be fanatic. I won't tell you to throw the television away. I have to be gentle. Make sure you dedicate the last three hours of the evening to your family. Well, if you come 
at 5 o'clock in the afternoon and you dedicate the, th the last three hours to your family without television. You might as well just yeah, throw the television away <laughs> also. <laughs> but, but nevertheless, if you still want to keep it, dedicate your last three hours to your family. Conversation, evening prayer, evening devotion, is setting your heart ready for bed. Now, all you parents know that if you get a baby, and just before, I used to get into trouble, you know, I used to get my babies, and it, when it was time to, to, to take them to bed, you know, I'll start playing with them, you know, they get all excited, and then uh, my wife will come after me and say, oh, you are, you are going to be the one that is going to remain awake until they fall asleep. Why? Because you just excite, uh, ex you just cause them to, to get all excited, right? And they're not going to sleep that easily. They're not going to rest that easily. Dedicate three hours of the evening to your family. Conversation. Lovely music background. We're talking about healing here. We're talking about God's plan. We're talking about an early night. 9.30 is a good time. I mean, in Spain, and I, I believe here happened the same thing, about nine o'clock, around nine o'clock at night, they used to come on TV, a little guy, that used to brush his teeth and send all the children to bed. Now, we don't want to look like hypocrites to our children, right? Why are they going and we're staying? So why we don't just set the example? 9.30, good time. Unless you are a pastor and you're doing a Bible study and uh, you're coming back home about around uh, 11.30. <laughs> All right? And by the way, talking about proper rest, anything that you sleep after 6 o'clock in the morning is a waste of time. Actually, you got your peak of rest around 5 to 6. Your body, physically, right, around 5 to 6. Anything that you sleep, don't laugh. <laughs> anything that, anything that is after six is a waste of time. Your body is calling you to get up. Your mind might not, but your body is, okay? Your body is calling you to get up through the functions of the body, through the liver functions, kidney functions, bowel functions. So get up at around six. I mean, don't go later than six o'clock because you just stay in bed and actually it's detrimental for your rest. No, it's not proper. It's not proper rest. Okay, so we move on. The L is lots of water. You know, we, how many here heard of New Star? New Star stands for pretty much the principles of health also. And in New Star, we have a W that stands for water. And people say, I drink water. How much do you drink? But a glass. It's a, a day? A week? I'm not kidding. I actually got people tell me, tell me that they thought they were drinking water and they were drinking a glass a week. Now we need to be more specific. That's why, that's why I put, uh, we, we put there lots of water. Now if you are around 70 kilograms, you need at least the minimum of six glasses. If you are 140, you have to start with 12 as the minimum. So if you don't want to drink 12, you start losing weight, <laughs> right? <laughs> to compensate. So you, you want less glasses of water, you start losing weight, right? So, you, so pretty much that's the rule. 70, that's equals 6. That's the minimum, okay? 6 is the minimum. A good tip, you get your jar of water and you always have a, ready, uh, a glass ready, filled up in the kitchen. Don't just drink it and leave it empty. Drink it and fill it up again. Because when you go to the kitchen again, oh, look at this, and you drink it and you drink it, okay? And there will go your six glasses. Look what the Lord is saying. Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it parted and became four river heads. Pure crystal water that water the garden and the people. We're talking about here usage of water internally and through showers, forget about sleeping pills, have a hot bath, and you sleep like a baby. Or a hot shower at night. Get used to the routine. 
hot showers at, in the morning, finishing with a cold shower, all right? Hot shower at night to go to bed. To, to go to bed. Hot and cold showers stimulate the circulation in your body. It is one of the most a strong, is, is, is a strong, one of the strongest methods to activate your circulation in your body. Hot, that's all right, and cold. That's not that all right for some, but hot and cold showers. Act your age also. If you have a heart problem, all right, just careful with winter, but hot and cold showers. Stimulate your circulation, makes your blood Run, run, make sure you, your blood runs through your body faster, okay? Flushes all toxins out. Use it. It's God's plan. Hey, well, now, there's, a, there's another word there that is a troublemaker. Which one is it? <laughs> that's, a, that's a troublemaker, isn't it? In fact, it's so much so a troublemaker. I'll show you a scripture. Of every tree of the garden you might freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat lest you die. Look how much of a troublemaker that word always is. I mean, we are in all this drama here because of that word always. Have you ever checked some of the advertisings? It's amazing. The devil's delight. Have you heard that one before? You know, a beautiful dish. Normally, when you look, check on the label, it has more numbers that I can count. And it is called the devil's delight. There's another one that is, is called temptation. How is it called? Temptation. There's another one. This is good. It says, you won't resist it. Have you heard of this advertising? Sometimes we are, we go, we are invited to, a, to, a, uh, to, to one of these community lunches, right? Like church lunch or whatever. And we have all this yummy food, you know, all around us. And then we go into the line. And this is a conversation that we hear in the line. I know you're going to laugh because you heard it before, but I just want to draw a point here. And this is what we hear. There's two, two people in front of you, and they're just teasing one to the other, you know. Do you think you can take a piece? And then they say, well, I'll eat it today, I'll confess tomorrow. Have you heard that one before? Or similar one, right? Uh, I will eat it today, I will confess about it tomorrow. See, we have to be temperate. We have to use temperance, sorry. Always. Our health is involved into this. Okay? God's plan, nutrition. I want to quickly um, finish off. And it says, um, And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, well, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Now, Relax now. I'm not going to convince, try to convince you that a vegetarian diet is more healthy than a meat diet. Amen. I don't think I have to try to convince you. You just need to read it and discover it for yourself. <laughs> All right? I'm not going to try to convince you. It's God's plan. Can you, can you read it in there? It's God's plan. But I want to deal with something else. Where does the digestion start? Hmm. In the mouth. Right? So make sure the food stays in the mouth long enough also. See, when we're swallowing and swallowing food, we're doing such a tremendous damage to our intestinal tract and system. We need to chew slowly. If you sit in front of somebody that cannot do that, excuse yourself and sit somewhere else. Because it is a proof of nature that when you get two clocks that are ticking, you know, when the clock is ticking, you know, tick, 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 
two clocks that are ticking at different, uh, different rates. You know, one is tick, 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 and the other one is ticking in between the spaces. In the course of a period of minutes, both watches will actually synchronize themselves. That's good talking about music also. When we have a synchronization in music that is not the proper synchronization of our hearts, either the music synchronizes to our heart or our heart synchronizes to the music. Right? So if you sit yourself in front of somebody that is ticking faster than you, that's what I mean by ticking, all right? They're not masticating. Excuse yourself because you'll be tempted, all right? Dedicate half an hour to your meal, you know? If you're not going to have half an hour, you know, just eat what you can eat in the five minutes, okay? By the way, I forgot to mention in, in temperance, eating between meals is one of the biggest killers for the human history. Eating between meals. You eat one single sultana, right? And you set up the whole system for one single sultana, right? It's like, like my father used to have an old photocopy machine. The old photocopy machines, you know, they used to take like, a, like 15 minutes to heat up. And I used to come from work, you know, and the photocopy machine was off, right? And I used to come from, sorry, from school. I used to come with one paper. Daddy, I need a photocopy for one paper. I mean, it was actually cheaper to go to the shops, pay the 10 cents, and get my photocopy rather than heat up that machine using electricity for 15 minutes. Did you catch the parallel? If we eat a sultana, we're actually moving a machinery in our bodies and we're wasting so much energy in it, and then we're wondering, why am I so tired? Eating between meals is one of the killers of society. Um, God damn. Okay, G is stands for? We're finishing. Godly trust. O it stands for? Open A. D it stands for? Daily exercise. Daily exercise. S stands for? You say it. <laughs> P it stands for? Proper rest. Proper rest. L stands for? A stands for? N stands for? Nutrition. August 2005, we received a phone call from my mom, again, telling us the news. This time, the person that was very sick was my grandmother. She had pancreatic cancer. So we make the arrangements here, took some time off work, and we flew to Spain. And I'll tell you, we, we had everything ready. We were going to go for it. We knew God's plan. I mean, we're not talking about a person that is reasonably healthy. We were talking about a person that has a cancer in one of the most difficult areas, the pancreas, right? But we were ready for it. We were ready for the program. We had the, um, the colon cleansers. We have the uh, liver cleansers, the herbs. We have, we, we, we have the hot and cold treatments. We had everything. We had the castor oil, the garlic pulpuses, the clay, all the natural remedies to help her body spell out the impurities. Isn't that what we read in the beginning? That's what I am convinced that drugs, medic medical drugs as such as we know them, they do not cure diseases. I have a problem with my van. My van overheats. It's overheating all the time. I'm not going to fix the problem by getting rid of the indicator that is telling me that it's overheating. But if we're taking a drug that is telling me, you know, you're not sick, when I really, I am sick, right? Sudden destruction will come upon me. 
In fact, I believe I run my, my van on the eight principles of health. Every time that I walk into that 1990 Toyota Tarago, I trust in the Lord that will take me to the place. Drinks plenty of water. In nutrition, plenty of petrol also likes it. And oil, you know, variety in the diet. It gives me proper rest every now and then. In fact, I have to borrow a, a friend's car today to come here. <laughs> so if I, if I continue on, my van runs on the L, uh, eight principles of health. The garden, the veggie garden runs on the eight principles of health, of health. The seed trusts in the Lord to grow. And you trust in that seed, that the Lord has put in that seed power enough to, to grow. You have to insert air in the soil why not compact it, the air, and rot rotate the crops to give it rest and air. You need water and you need nutrition, but you need temperance on the nutrition bit because you cannot have a pumpkin full of nitrogen that is this big, right? You need temperance on the nutrition. So it's God's plan, even in the garden. We arrived to Spain. We walked through the door. My grandma at that time, lost a lot of weight. She was getting jello. She was, the skin was all jello before we got there. And this is what modern medicine did to her. She was getting jello because the body was reacting. The, the body was not just a, 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 a physical feeling inside that she was sick. Now she is like a jello light, right? She was turning jello. Jello light flashing, telling her, you are sick, you are sick, you are in, a, in deep waters, you have to do something about it. I'm working with you, you cooperate with me, we spell it out. She was 70 years old, I mean, nobody can tell me that my grandmother was old enough. When we have people here that lived up to 100. Fair enough, it was her time. But at the same time, I want to tell you the story. I cannot judge the timing of the death of my grandmother. We arrived there, And now she didn't look yellow, because what they did, they did a bypass. All the fluids that were producing this yellowish color in her skin and letting her know you are sick, it was a bit of inconvenience for her, or for the doctors at least. So they did a bypass. So those, those juices will be just stuffed there, stuck there, you know, and it won't be reflected in the skin. Now it's just like taking my indicator for my radiator. That hasn't changed anything. She felt, because she didn't know what's going, what was going on, by the way, she thought that she was getting better. The doctors had done something to her. She was getting better. The only thing that they did was taking the radiator indicator, or the, the indicator of, of the temperature, out of her, disconnected it. I arrived in the house. She was quite skinny. She used to be a big lady, quite skinny. And she was cooking something. She was awake, she was standing, she was cooking something. And then I saw what she was cooking. Any of you heard of black sausages? You heard of that? Black sausages. I've got a Spaniard with me, he can testify. The only vegetable part of it is the rice that they mix with it. And it's white rice. Black sausages. She cooked them, and she started eating them. She started eating them. And I said, Grandma, I knew what was going on. I knew she had pancreatic cancer. I said, Grandma, this is not going to help you. And do you know what she said to me? She said, this is the only thing that I can eat. I cannot eat anything else. This is, this is the only thing that, that is nice and gentle to my stomach. We're talking about black sausages here. Pork black sausages. I realized back then that all my plans, all my hot and cold treatments, all my herbal remedies for the cleansing of the bowels and all that, they were all thrown th throw through the window. It was not going to happen, isn't it? It was not going to happen. Two months later, she died. And it's a sad and it's a pity thing, isn't it? 
See, the, the, the purpose of the enemy is to take us away from God's plan. I've got a, I've got a young lady that I know. John lady that I know. She's suffering from depression. She is enclosed in her bedroom, talking about open air. She cannot sleep at night. She's full of antidepressants. Uh, anti anti antidepressants, sorry. She cannot sleep. S the parents cannot see when, when she's eating because she never leaves the, bed the bedroom. The, 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 the bedroom, sorry. She, is, uh, she goes into the fridge and gets something in between meals or whatever, and then go back, goes back to the bedroom. She does not do any exercise. Never sees the, shine, the, the sunshine. She only drinks Coca-Cola all the time. Now, is any wonder that she is in the state that she is? Now, there's two circles. The Lord is inviting us to jump into His circle, into His plan. It's God's plan. The enemy knows that in order to cause the seas upon us, he has to take us from that circle into another circle. And that's the circle that my friend is into. She is into this other circle. And the enemy knows that as long as we are kept in that circle, we cannot be made well. Now, you have to excuse me, but we won't have the last hymn today. It's 12.30. We won't have the last hymn. But, first of all, I want to invite those that heard this plan for the first time to actually accept it in their lives. It's God's plan. I mean, this is just an introduction. There's a lot of material out there. I encourage you to come in the afternoon at 3 o'clock as Angela is presenting for us. Okay, issues on cancer. But there are plenty of material. There are cooking classes in this church. This church is very active in health. There are plenty of, plenty of people that can help you in changing your lifestyle and moving, moving your lifestyle from this circle to God's plan. And you know, the Lord says, test me on this. Try me on this. Give the Lord time. Give him a month. Give him two months. And say, Lord, I'm going to jump into this circle for one month, for two months. I'll tell you, I guarantee you, the Lord will have you for eternity on that circle. You will love it. You will enjoy it so much. You'll, you won't want to leave. You will be so positive, positively minded and more energetic and healthy that you won't leave. But just for the sake of giving a time, you know, the Lord is, is, he has the whole hand of poker here, and he says, okay, try me on this, test me on this. Give the Lord a month. Give him two months on this plan, on his plan. You won't regret it. If that is due to your desire, I know you have a pastor here that, I don't know what, what, what got into him, but he keeps on ask, uh, asking people to stand up and come to the front. I want to pray for you, and I want to invite you. I don't want to break the routine of the church, and I believe it is essential and, and necessary every time that we make a decision to really make a decision. When we got married, I was required to sign contract. Never regret it. Regret it. I'm married with the most beautiful lady here. No, no offense for anybody else, but I don't have eyes for anything, anybody else but my wife. She is beautiful. She is the angel. She is my rib. But if that is you, Desire, if you heard God's plan for the first time, this is just for those that heard God's plan for the first time, and you want to give it a try, you want to Put God to the test for one month, two months. You do it in your heart. And I want to invite you to come forward to actually, because I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your decision as you give God a chance. Is anybody here from those that have heard God's plan for the first time? Okay. You might actually have stuff in your house that are from this circle over here. 
okay? You might actually recognize now that that stuff won't be, a, won't be helpful in the month or two months that you're giving to the Lord, okay? But nevertheless, you still want to try it. You want to be healthy. The Lord is not a vegetarian crocodile. He loves you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your plan. We thank you for your reminder in our hearts that you love us, you want to heal us, you want to live this, this, go through this place, and as in the times of old, when Jesus went through the villages, Lord, that no sick man will be among us. And I pray, Lord, that for all of them that have made a decision, Lord, you can use your providence, you can use the means, the people, to guide them, to instruct them. You can use your word, the resources, the material. I know, Lord, that you are a heavenly father and nobody is an orphan when they have you as the father. You are taking care and you are taking full responsibility now, Father, of the decisions that have been made today on your plan for a healthier a better life, Father. I pray that that the blood of Jesus will cover and will honor that as you, you can only do. I pray, Lord, that uh, their families will be influenced, influenced by this decision. And many people will come to the truth just because we are standing on the minor issues, nevertheless, big issues after all. If, if any issue is minor enough that prevents us from standing, then it's no minor anymore. It becomes a big issue. Lord, if we have any idols in our, in our hearts in regards to this plan of health, I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you will cast down every idol in our heart, Lord. And the Holy Spirit can impress our hearts to which ones they are. I pray for, for those, Lord, that have not made a decision. I pray, Lord, that uh, I pray for your mercy, your long suffering, your love and kindness, regardless of our decisions, Father. Nothing will separate us from your love. You love us, you are after us, you are desperate for us, and you won't let us go until the time comes. And I pray, Lord, that everybody here will hear your voice and stand up for you. I pray, Lord, that everybody here will hear the voice of the shepherd as you're taking us to green pastures. Be with us in this day of rest, Lord, in this holy Sabbath day. In Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Thank you, friends. Thank you, brother.